Hello, this is the Radio Geek, and I've got something a little different for you today. You may have seen a previous video where I had uh, reviewed this little uh, multimeter here. The um, I guess it's best known as the Victor VC921. This one, I believe, is the the same meter. It's just branded under a, a different name. Um, and what I found was that uh, this meter normally is a what they call a 4,000 count meter, which means if you're measuring a resistance or um, a voltage, like right now I'm measuring a, uh, a voltage of a power supply and it's at 4.907 volts. As soon as I get to 4 volts, um, it'll, it'll lose one of these digits the least significant digit here will be gone and then it would just be reading like 4.00 instead of 4.000 or 002 or 3 or something like that so it, it's not that it's more accurate it just gives you more resolution of the voltage or resistance that you're looking at and I found that there's a way that you can um, change the contents of the EEPROM in this meter and let it be a 6,000 count meter or even an 8,000 count meter. Now currently I've tried this and this now is a 6,000 count meter and I'm going to attempt to uh, go through it again and change it to an 8,000 count meter which means right now it's being a 6,000 count meter after my modification if you're measuring something up to about that we're on voltage right now so say six volts uh, slightly over six volts and then you'll lose this uh, least significant digit of resolution and if I take it to an 8,000 count multimeter then it'll be able to measure uh, eight volts but it'll be 8.000 you have three digits after the decimal point um, it's just a little bit more resolution. It, it doesn't really mean that much, but I just mainly did it just to uh, just to have the experience of uh, of doing it. It sounded like something fun to do, so that's what I did. So I'll, I'll show you that it's a 6,000 count meter currently. If you watch the display, it counts up. I still have three digits after the decimal point, and I believe I can go up to. What is it? Um, Five point uh, or six point uh, three or something like that before it clicks over. See now we're over six volts slightly, and I think it's around six point three. There, just a little before that, but there. See, we lost that digit, so now it's six point two eight. So we don't know what that that other digits out here are. No idea what they are. So. Um, if you were monitoring a, a charging circuit or something like that and you wanted to see which way it was trending, if it was trending up or down, you, you might be able to detect that a little easier if you had some more resolution. So it's, it doesn't make the meter any more accurate. It's just you have more resolution to see what's going on. So now you can see it's a, a 6,000 count meter. And if I increase the voltage, it's going to just stay at two decimal points. And get over to 10 it's still two after the decimal point so that's as that's as good as it gets and you have to drop back down uh, below six volts or thereabouts for it to pop back see now we got the uh, three uh, positions after the decimal point there so I'm going to attempt to uh, modify this uh, e squared e EEPROM and uh, the contents of it and make it an 8,000 count. So you might say, well, what do you have to do to do that? Well, you do have to have some tools to do it, and I wouldn't say that I'd recommend anybody go out and get this stuff just to modify a $14 multimeter. I I got this uh, programmer because I want to do some other things as well, and in the process I figured I'd try this out. But the programmer that I have is um, this one here which is a, uh, a TL-866 Universal Programmer. It's very 
well received and highly reviewed on uh, on Amazon and uh, and other sites. You can get it on Amazon or eBay. Um, they're about fifty-ish dollars, depending on where you get them. Now, like I say, it wouldn't really be worthwhile spending that much money on this just to <laughs> to modify a fourteen-dollar meter. So this is just uh, one example of what you can do with this. Um, it, it programs a lot of uh, other devices as well. If you're interested in more information about this, there are several good YouTube videos on this um, programmer as well. If you just search for the TL866 Universal Programmer and uh, you can learn all about it. So what else do you need? Well, you need the data sheet for the chip or the main controller chip that's in this multimeter to be able to, to read the data sheet to see what changes you need to make. Now I found on the internet and I'll try to provide a, a link in the uh, in the description here um, there's a guy that has a blog his name apparently is uh, Kerry Wong it's uh, carrywong.com and he found that this um, what the uh, what the chip was underneath that blob or what that blob is and apparently it's this uh, DTM uh, 0660 uh, chip that's in there and the data sheet for that chip was in Chinese and he translated it to English and like I say I'll put a link to that in the in the description and it within this um, data sheet there is a section that I have highlighted here that talks about the ranges and it's talking about this chip in general and uh, apparently when they set this meter up they made it 4,000 count although here when they talk about it they say the default is 6,000 well not for this meter but it, it can be changed to 6,000 as I have done so looking at what they want you to do looking at the 6,000 as an example they say the default range is uh, 6,000 decimal and that's at uh, hex address 10 stores the low byte of 70 and hex address of 11 stores the high byte and that says the same low byte high byte arrangement below so that means you've got to change like three different things to get your um, resolution to change and basically what they're saying is um, you have to flip-flop those two uh, values because the first part of the address um, 10 hex stores the low byte and 11 hex stores the high byte so if you're looking at what it's supposed to be you have to flip it around so an example would be what I figured out here for the 8000 so hex 1f40 if you convert that to decimal, it's 8,000. And there's lots of um, hex to decimal conversion websites and things on the internet if you, if you need to do that. Um, so the first number for our um, address 10 and 11 is going to be this, this 1F40. That's, that's your 8,000. But it says here that the high byte and the low byte or opposite so that means that you have to put um, uh, four zero in first as address 10 and one F as address 11 hex 11 so it would be four zero one F instead of one F four zero the next um, section or thing here is talking about the range the upper limit and their examples for the 6,000 count of 6200 decimal um, so we're going to be 8,000 count. So we're going to make ours 8,200 instead of 6,200. So the hex value for 8,200 is 2008. Here again, you have to flip-flop it around. So for address 12 and 13, you've got 08 and 20. And then 
the last part is this, and it's talking about the lower limit of the range, and I guess that's where it transitions from um, an 8,000 count meter back to only two decimal places. And its value, it says, for the 6,000 count uh, was um, 580 decimal, and a 4,000 count was 380. So we got 4,000 was 380, and another 2,000 would be 6, and it was 580, so that's 200. So if you go on from 6 to 8,000 count, then it would be another 200 on here, so that would be 780 decimal. So 780 decimal is hex 030C. And again, you have to flip them, so it would be OC03 instead of 030C. They're flipped around. So basically, everything I have written up here is what we need to change, and it's in the order that it needs to be changed. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to fire up the software for the um, programmer, and then I have to take this apart and I have to have one of these clips here that I bought separately from the programmer. This is an, um, an a, a, a SOIC 8-pin um, chip clip, which basically has these jaws on it with uh, little metal connections in it that will make connections to the legs of the IC when I put it right on top of the IC like that. And there is a red wire in this ribbon cable and that denotes pin 1 so that wire right here so this corner of the chip clip would be on pin 1. The other end of the cable is like this. It's just a ribbon cable that plugs in and it even tells you on the board where pin 1 is on this particular one and that will have to be plugged into the programmer. It's the programmer that would have to be plugged into the programmer like this and it tells you on the programmer where pin 1 is it's over here and that's where pin 1 is and then you have to close the lever now this essentially makes a connection with this socket to this chip clip which we're going to be clipping on to our uh, EEPROM inside the meter once I get it apart and then we will read the content of it and we'll, we'll make a copy of that, we'll save it just in case something goes wrong we can always put that back in there. Then we'll make these changes to make it an 8,000 count meter and then we'll write that content to the chip. Then we'll assemble the meter again and see if it works. Alright, here we are on the inside of the meter. You have to take it completely out of the case unfortunately because the way it fits into the case is like this and the uh, EEPROM is on the other side of the board so it would have been nice if it was on this side you just open the back and clip it on there but fortunately it's not that easy um, so it is on the back side of the board here it's this um, 8 pin chip right here and there's a a dot on the corner of the chip that designates that that is pin 1 in this corner and if you look closely at the chip probably with some magnification you can see that it's a 24CO2 um, EEPROM chip. So the first thing to do is to get our chip clip on there and the red wire is pin 1 so this is going to be pin 1 down here and pin 1 on the chip is on this uh, lower left corner so we'll see if we can get this um, positioned on there it does take a little bit of uh, practice and sometimes it wants to pop off but um, but you know you try it a few times if it if it doesn't work then you just need to um, um, reposition it you can kind of look at it from the sides and kind of see if you think you've um, you've got it where you uh, you need it to be. Uh, 
Okay. I think we have it. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to try to read the content of the E square, uh, the EE prompt. So let me do that. Let me uh, pause the camera, take it off the tripod, and I'll try to uh, show what happens on the computer end. Okay, here we are at the computer. I don't have screen capture software, so this is just a camera shot here. Um, but in this software, you just go up here to the the um, big R here on the chip for read. And we'll try that. And we did have to select the uh, the chip that we're using, which was uh, a 24CO2. Um, just go down here to um, start or read rather it said read finished so just cancel all that now this is the content of the e squared and right here at hex address 10 this is 10 11 12 13 14 15 these are the numbers that we need to change so we'll just highlight that and our first one is going to change to a uh, four zero, and then the next one will be a one F, and the next one is a O oh, eight, and let's see what's the next one. Twenty. Sorry, I have to refer back to my note here and then OC um, OC and then O3 okay sorry for the shaky uh, cam work there so everything there in red is what we have changed Got a four zero one F zero eight two zero zero C and a zero three. Okay, so that should be it. Um, I guess we should have saved the original content uh, of this before we. Um, change anything to a file. I guess I uh, didn't do that because I already have a copy of the um, 6,000 count um, changes on the computer anyway. Um, so we're just going to go for it. And go over here and hit the program key over there, the chip with the P on it. And we'll hit the program. And it said program successful. Okay get out of that and we'll get you back on the uh, tripod here okay back here after the programming remove the uh, chip clip so the next step for us is to assemble everything again and uh, try it and see if it works um, you need to take some care in putting it back together with the routing of these um, wires and then this here is where your uh, zebra strip makes contact and inside the case here are um, let's see opposite of the battery terminal right yeah you have to um, make sure that um, I'm sorry I've got the wrong end of the case just a minute Sorry about that. Uh, this is what I meant to look at. Um, so you have your, your zebra strips here, and you have two. I don't know if I can zoom in on this at all. There we go. So you've got um, two of these little plastic like nubs here. The circuit board has to tuck underneath those so that it applies pressure to this um, zebra strip. And be very careful that these buttons uh, can fall right out and you don't want to mess with your contact springs because those can pop out as well. So um, there are quite a few uh, screws 
uh, five screws one in the middle of the uh, selector switch as well um, I believe they're all the same size screw so that shouldn't be a problem but if you put it back together and your displays kind of reading weird it, it's probably that this isn't making good contact this um, zebra strip on onto the uh, the pads of the um, of the circuit board so that's something to look out for if it's not working correctly and of course the zebra strips make uh, make contact here with this area here okay so I'm going to pause the camera here and put it all back together and hopefully I come back with a working multimeter. Alright, we're back here. We've done the 8000 count uh, mod. Got it all back together. Got it hooked up to the power supply. I'm going to turn the power supply on and hopefully we have an 8000 count meter. Alright, got 4.855 volts. Let's increase that. Oh, we got 6.9. It's looking good. 6.904. Look at that. 8.114. Three places after the decimal. And here shortly it should lose one of those uh, digits. Yeah, about 8.2 ish, it looks like, is when it drops back. So there you go, we got an 8,000 count meter, it was a 4,000 count meter, and now it's an 8,000 count meter. So um, yeah, I just kind of did it just to do it, um, just kind of a learning experience and uh, just kind of messing around with things like that. If you'd like to do this to one of these meters, um, by all means, um, give it a try. Um, I will say that uh, I will not be uh, <laughs> held responsible if you brick your meter or it doesn't work or something catches on fire. It's not my fault. Do it at your own risk, basically. Um, you can get cheaper programmers than the one that I bought. Um, they have some on eBay that are, you know, $10, $12. But the problem with those, from what I read, is that it's just the programmer. There's no no software, no drivers, and you have to scour the underbelly of the internet um, on some pretty sketchy websites to get it all together and get it to work. Um, I wanted a out-of-the-box solution that worked and I wanted to use it for other things so that's what I went for the uh, TL866 Universal um, Programmer. Like I say probably wouldn't buy it just to do this to this meter um, it was just that uh, it, uh, it was a meter that could be modified by, by changing the contents of the EEPROM. And so I thought I'd uh, give it a try and see what would happen. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the video and the little mini uh, tutorial, I guess. And if you have any questions, I'll, I'll try my best to answer them. I'm, I'm by no means no expert with this uh, software manipulation, but... Um, I guess I, uh, I know enough to be dangerous. Anyway, until next time, this is the Radio Geek.